Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Guys, I am starting a new series on uh, di different factions, the, di the essence of different factions, that is. And uh, what I want to do, I want to show you guys like team comps that'll work in 5v5 and in 3v3, you know, offense and defensive strategies. Some we're not going to show like how each of these teams kills. Like you'll have to look up my other videos for that. Uh, plenty of material out there. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the team comps but then I also want to talk about modding because modding for resistance for any team man modding is just the core of this game frankly and I know some of you don't like that but hopefully I can spell it out for you guys you guys don't have to figure it out on your own if you don't want to uh, of course it's always recommended that you read the kits and everything if you want to be a better player you good players read the kits and then they read them again and again and eventually they find things that are actually very useful so um, I'm still figuring things out myself of course but I am going to show you guys uh, my take on things so I don't claim to be the sole arbiter of truth if you have uh, if you have contention with what I have to say if you have adulation with what I say uh, for what I say if you just think that I sound super dumb now if you think that then just uh, you know just keep it to yourself or just get deleted in the comments your call but um, <laughs> let me know in the comments if you want to have a good conversation about this stuff I would love to discuss this with you guys love talking shop and um, if I'm if I'm wrong about something I want to know so let me know uh, respectfully and we'll we'll continue so uh, resistance we're going to talk about comps with galactic ray galactic challenge hero whatever legend Rey is uh all the jedi and we're gonna talk about comps without her because she she's good but in a way she she can be kind of outside the resistance faction as well like she's just good with all the light side characters as well in a way she's like all the light side not just uh all the jedi and ironically she's she's not all the resistance even though that's all, all her tags so uh, anyways, we're going to ignore, and I, I don't mean to belittle anyone who loves these characters and thinks they're wonderful, uh, but we're going to just kind of cut out from our attention certain characters because they don't really form any really great groups with just resistance. Not not currently, not, not in the current state. So, uh, things that you're going to want to cut out. Uh, unfortunately, Scavenger Ray, she's Relic 7, I know. She hits like a truck, and she is slow and not, uh, she's super squishy even at Relic 7. Um, I, I know you could use her in 3v3 in desperation and kind of do well, but uh, she's she's not someone we're going to pay attention to. C-3PO has the resistance tag. He's better as a rebel, and we're just going to ignore him because he doesn't come into any of our comps here. Like, he, he's resistance last. Like, every other faction needs him more, frankly. Uh, not that he's not good with them, but we can find better comps for him. Um... For the most part, we're going to be ignoring Finn and the veteran smugglers. I will. Uh, there is a, there are a couple comps here that we're going to talk about with them. That's going to be for three v three, so we'll stay tuned for that. And then resistance pilot, uh, I guess, put six e mods on pilot, and I guess Scavray and Finn. Uh, if you want your resistance fleet to be good, Radis is very good. If you have Houndstooth, hopefully one day they give us like a bomber, some kind of a tank for the team. Right now they haven't seen fit to. So uh, Resistance Trooper, it makes me sad to say it because he's been in a lot of good comps and maybe he'll find like some kind of like raid comp that he's good in eventually again. But right now he's just, uh, he's, he, I, I was gonna say playing second fiddle. He's playing like 15th fiddle. Like no one wants him, no one needs him. I know there are a couple weird comps out there with him, uh, so. Whatever, keep an eye out for him. His 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 kid is actually not bad. I, I feel like he'll be relevant again, but right now he's just kind of not. Uh, Rose Tico is never relevant in game or out of game. And Poe Dameron, he's a good pilot. So maybe put 6E on him if you have some garbage ones, uh, you know. And that's it, call, call it good. He's also in another comp later down the line. Uh, so well, we'll talk about that. So that, that that forms the core, guys. We've got the two rays that matter, the uh, two droids that matter. Holdo is actually very relevant. She's going to be in a lot of five v five comps. 
Uh, the Hero Bros are amazing, and in a way, they really love to get away from Ray here, uh, from this version of Ray, and then uh, that's that, that's basically the core guys. That's like the seven characters that matter most in Resistance. So um, that's that's that. And let's let's actually look at some squads. We'll look at squad comps here, and then I, I want to get into modding pretty quick before even we get into three v three. So. Um, Here's the thing, guys. I think you can you can choose to do one of two things with resistance, depending on what your strategy is, what you think is good. Um, I like to do either or. You know, if you have a really high GP like me, I mean, I have I have 7.6 million GP, and that that's not the highest, but it's high enough that I can start smashing teams together to make them more effective. And if you want to do that, that that this is you know there's an effective way to do it. But I like to split them apart if possible. So what we've got here, guys, I should probably just put this one at the very top. The very top one is what I consider to be the golden standard for like like this is the best team on defense that you can have in 3v3 uh or sorry in 5v5 and uh it's not the best offensive comp because the best offensive comp is going to involve droids and probably like mirror matching ray and it it can be a mess but uh what you're doing with this team, you have two tanks actually because Jedi Training Ray is technically a tank. When he, when Finn throws his grenade, you want him to be fast. When he throws his grenade, then all of the taunt, all of the tanks will taunt. And whenever anyone is debuffed, she is going to get a lot of turn meter uh, resistance. Hero, uh, sorry, uh, Jedi Training Ray. Um, in addition to all of that, we have Holdo here as a tank. She can do a few interesting things. I think the thing I like most about her is that she gives crit avoidance to Jedi Train or er, to Ray. So um, let's real quick let's look at some modding. Um, and, and okay, so my Ray is modded for three v three. How I see three v three is best. So uh, don't don't pay attention to that necessarily. Um, that that's just <laughs> I'm not going to remod all. all a ton for this video in fact not not much at all so uh what you want with ray in 5v5 she really benefits when she does lifeblood you can you can see that um yeah so she loses 25 percent of her health and then um all other light sides gain half that amount uh in bonus protection and the bonus protection never goes away it never goes away until uh it's forcibly removed and so logic dictates you you want a lot of health on her tons of health like six uh mods worth of health set uh and then you want to have a circle with health you always want circle health regardless, guys, because bonus protection is derived from your max health. As silly as that sounds, that's how it works. So um, right now, my my Ray has 177k health. She could have considerably more than that, uh, I realize, but uh, this is an offense modded Ray. If you want one set of health usually, um, no. The, there's a couple variant things at the very base level though she doesn't need to be super fast you can see mine is at 502 not super fast uh, you can make her a little faster she has a mix of like good uh, like really transcendent actually mods and then like some okay mods like an offense or i i don't know like 500 is fine it is a fine speed to shoot for you want health uh in 5v5 you want health here usually Health here, usually, though you can go offense and offense. You don't want crit damage, because most of her damage is just based on her offense stat, not crit damage stat. And um, you can do health here, you can do speed, you can do offense, whatever you want to do. Um, you want 60 mods, of course, but in 5v5, you probably just want lots of health. Lots and lots of health. Actually, though, for this arrow, what you want, in general, is going to be a crit avoid arrow. And now... Uh, Here's the thing, guys. If you want to avoid Vader countering you with Rey, uh, then you want Crit Avoid on her because what ends up happening is she gets that Crit Avoid uh, for here. So she has zero base, but you, you get 35% Crit Avoid on her arrow. And then you take Holdo, and Holdo, you, you gotta put the Zeta on Holdo, uh, but it's a very good Zeta. What that Zeta does is it gives Rey an additional 20% Crit Avoid. So it immediately, she's got 55% crit avoid and when Vader goes in and he's got like 110% crit chance maybe uh, if you take 55 away from that 
then he's left with a, it's like a 50 50 shot like 55 percent chance to get a crit uh on his saber toss and if he's relying on that crit like a, a coin flip isn't enough like it's just not enough it that's going to be a very effective way to counter vader uh the other way to counter vader uh, in addition to all of that is instead of health set mods you want all tenacity set mods you want to get her tenacity as high as you can and uh, mine isn't that high at all but you get a high tenacity on her with all the tenacity sets all the different things and then vader is going to struggle hard she she can get to be right around like 300 sorry 300 dear lord oh like 200 uh tenacity if you do the cross and the three sets of tenacity you can get it super high so um then vader is going to do his force crush he's not going to land nearly as many debuffs and then he can't do as much damage because he has all the all the um dots uh, without the dots uh proccing he can't do extra damage with his saber toss so um Modding Ray uh, in 5v5, if you want to avoid Vader uh, and you want to mod her internally for that, uh, you know, uh, you can get a tenacity cross, all tenacity sets, uh, health cross, or health triangle, health circle, etc. So try, try that, I guess. Uh, there are other ways to avoid Vader in 5v5, which I prefer to do. I prefer to just keep her pretty tanky. Uh, often set, if you're doing 3v3, I'll, I'll go over that in a little bit, but uh, that's basically what you want to do with Rey. So uh, the next character, now th these are all, I'm, I'm in the middle of a 3v3 season, so all my modding is directed at that. I really think that it carries over though. You want Jedi training Rey to be kind of fast, but you also, you do want her to have some potency because her mind trick does does all sorts of cool things, uh, including days, ability block, offense down, speed down, etc. Uh, she can roof turn meter, all of that stuff. Um, you want her to be able to crit decently well. You can see I don't have all 6e on her, um, but her base stats, guys, I mean, she is pretty quick. Plus 120, yeah, she, she has good mods on her, of course. Um, I, I mean, I have good mods. I want to, I'm going to use them if I can to my best advantage. I do like having potency on her. You can see she has a pretty low base potency. It's like 35 or something like that. And that's not going to apply very much. If you can get her potency up in, in 3v3 or in 5v5, that's nice. I know the BBA gives you a nice bonus uh, and all that, but you can't really rely on that, especially because she is usually going to be going right away after BB-8 takes his first turn. So uh, using that, using this potency is really nice. Uh, initially, that first move is really important. I would I would focus on potency. You can get some crit damage if you want, but po take a potency set, get a crit damage set, uh, get crit chance up if you can, because. Uh, it, it doesn't matter as much in 3v or in 5v5 because she's not, or at least with Ray. But in 5v5, if she is the leader, uh, she can do some stuff. So as the leader, we can just look at that real quick. Uh, every time you do a crit hit, uh, you inflict expose. And so what what happens is when you want you want a lot of crits. That, that's basically it. Um, all the exposes are going to do the majority of your damage. Health percent damage is really good. In some circumstances, it's solid. Um, now, if you're running the Ray team in 5v5, the ideal way to mod Finn, you want him to be pretty quick. He's going to get plus 30 from Ray's leadership. And uh, mine isn't lightning fast. It's quick enough. 320, uh, so you want him to be fast. And then, uh, other than that, like you can give him damage, you can give him, you can give him whatever. Like honestly, his job is to be fast. If you can give him extra damage, that's great. Um, I think I just kind of just, yeah, I, I put offense on him. That's that's fine. Uh, crit chance. I, I think I just wanted a faster speed set or a speed triangle on him. Um, he could be faster, obviously. Like we could get him six speed faster. He could be at 326. That, that would be nice, but. Um, 6e is so hard to get though, guys, without spending a lot of money. Now, the ideal though, so check out his speed, 320. Now, okay, I don't know why I had you look at this, because my resistance hero po is not something I do. If you have the mods and you want to make this team, like, the very best possible, it will say hero fin is 320. What you want to do with po is then you, you're going to need speed sets on him in 5v5. 320, you want 
want him to be 319. So what happens is Finn is going to pass the turn to Poe. Poe is gonna shoot or whatever, but because Finn can pass a turn to someone, he swaps turn meter, and because they're so close in speed, it, he barely goes down any turn meter, and the AI plays it so that he always passes it to Poe. So what, what'll end up happening, Ray will take her turn, she'll do lifeblood on someone, then Finn will go, he'll pass a turn to Poe if Poe's available. Poe will then uh, try to stun someone, and then uh, because Finn had his turn meter go down so little, he's gonna immediately take another turn. He'll throw a grenade, and that grenade of healing not only heals his squad, not that they need it necessarily, but uh, it also forces Holdo and Resi or Jedi Training Ray to taunt, and, uh, and then if you've gotten that chain of events off and the opponent hasn't taken a turn yet, you basically win. Usually Vader's gonna go in the middle of that and disrupt it, but that's the basic strategy. Now, Holdo, you just want her to have a lot of health. I, I have her modded for speed because I'm dumb and I had her modded like this a long time ago. I think if I did remod her, like her base her base speed is so bad. They take takes almost no bonus from the speed sets. She's terrible. This isn't a good speed. Isn't a good set for her at all. You want health on her though. And you can see I don't have too many health. Like 6E if you can because she's a good tank. Um, You, you want all that health though. Um. If you can, just to keep her alive. Otherwise, like armor, I guess, would be fine. Like defense sets, if you wanted to. Speed is pretty optional. She doesn't take many turns. She just sits there and sits there and does nothing. Um, I think, yeah, okay. So, uh, while she doesn't have taunt, she has plus 50 speed. And all resistance allies have plus 20% crit avoid. This is the Zeta that I was talking about. Um, if you... So, if she is taunting, you don't have the crit avoid. But... Um, uh, situationally, this can really, really mess up a Vader team. And her taunt is good. She's annoying. She's she's just a wall of ir irritation. So, um, I w I would actually probably even just I'd go extreme on her if I had to. I'll I'll have to remake her sometime. But, um, yeah, like crit avoid is fine on her. If you wanted to do that, you could. Um, I guess you could put tenacity on. Honestly, you could put tenacity on all of these guys. If you wanted to go crazy and you wanted to counter Vader uh, like really, really well, just put a ton of tenacity everywhere and Vader's just gonna wilt and die because he can't apply dots. And I mean, that that would be an effective strategy. Um, that being said, guys, uh, the final piece of it all, uh, Poe, I do think that if you don't want to go crazy with speed on him, because he is significantly slower than Finn, um, it, you just give him offense. Give him a lot of damage, and, um, you know, crit, crit chance is great. Uh, one thing to note is he does, forget which one it is, one of these things, he does do um, damage based off of max health yeah okay so uh when inspired allies deal damage to an enemy so this is inspired it's something he gives to everyone um then they also deal the bonus damage equal to 10 percent of the target's max health so like this this can really melt like a, a padme team for instance uh it's pretty interesting but um you know you, you, you call the you call the assist and it can this can really do a lot of damage so um Anyways, a ton of the damage is actually based off of that uh, from Hero Poe from this squad. Now, that being said, uh, this squad isn't... I don't think that's the very best way to do this squad. I think that... Um, I do it sometimes, I do, but... I think that the best is going to be a split. Honestly, guys, um, and now we're, we're going to go kind of quick over this. Um, I like the Jedi Training Ray squad just because... Uh, it, it kills a lot of teams. Like you can kill Darth Revan with this in five v five. It's pretty good. Uh, you can kill. You can kill all sorts of stuff with it. Honestly, um, it. You know, with the with her ability to give healing immunity, it this can it can be super obnoxious. It can take most teams out. You you do rely on turn meter, so don't take on a squad that negates turn meter. Like Hux is like custom built to screw this team over, and that's fine. But um. 
here's the thing guys the other piece of it is you want the droids to function better than you than they would normally i guess um so ray depends on being able to do crits on people so if they have a lot of crit avoid then you could struggle a lot so what i did r2d2 shares a bunch of his stats that's pretty neat um i, I put um some confusing mods on him apparently wow why did i do that um so he's not very fast he doesn't have any speed he doesn't have a speed set on what am i i must have just done that recently oh i know why okay i was remodding something else uh I, okay anyways so he he should have a, a speed set and probably a health set he could have a honestly a potency set is also great on him uh, he has a pretty high natural potency he grabs potency from other resistance characters um so he he does he does pretty well um he also and then he hands out a bunch of stats but the thing you really want from him the thing that really helps him a lot is an extra 20 percent crit chance on his triangle and that that applies that's applied since the raid the sith raid back in the day you want him to be able to crit and he does special damage i believe oh that's physical Okay, special on the smoke though. So, like the smoke is gonna be tough to crit because special is harder to crit on. Uh, so crit chance, yeah. So he's at 44% now that we added the extra 20. Still not super high, but uh, he's gonna get bonuses from other places. Give him that crit chance though. It's really good to be able to counter like Commander Luke teams that have high tenacity or crit avoid. Um, BB-8 as well. You want him to be pretty quick. I think the golden standard for him would be like 300 speed at least. Obviously, I have him a little faster than that. He's going to gain, if he's with R2-D2 in the same squad, he's going to gain 16% of hit 16% uh, additional uh, speed or basically like af after his turn meter so uh, he, he can absolutely he usually has the team going first this is a relatively quick one I, you can you can make him a lot faster though if you're really scared just remember that he only he's gonna drag Ray I think 16% turn meter I believe and if she's not within that range then you could have some issues so um, once again <clears throat> I think you want crit chance. You don't need potency with him because he just does tenacity down, um, but that crit chance, once again, is pretty good um, uh, to be able to proc those exposes because a majority of this squad's damage is based off of exposes. So, um, if you do that squad, then you're like, okay, well, so what other resistance do I even have available? And the answer is you don't use resistance. You, you use other squads. Um, so if you use the Bando team or if you use the clones, you don't have to worry about Vader. Like, Vader is just not going to be able to counter those. Doesn't work uh, at all. And so that that's wonderful. And the, the 501st, I know people like to take... Uh, General Skywalker, but Skywalker a lot of times is going with Jedi these days anyways. He's just hanging out as part of a part of a multi-Jedi team. Um, Jawas are a kind of unpopular choice. I I would never run this really uh, with with Jawas, but that, that totally works. That also shuts down Vader for the most part. Uh, General Skywalker can counter it on his own if he wants to, so be careful of that. I guess the better thing would be to take one of these guys out. You want Scavenger, Java Scavenger, and then you can do like Barris in there or something to heal. Um, <clears throat> it can be an obnoxious squad as well. Um, and then, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a good, th these are all decent squads. Like I guess Vander, uh, Vander's pretty good because if you give him lifeblood, he gets a buff immediately. So you keep him at gear 12. You put lifeblood on him, and then that plus lifeblood, like it's gonna make, it, because he has a permanent buff on him, it's going to make all damage against light side characters minus 25%. So uh, it can really slow him down. You have a pre taunt with L3, you have uh, Nest in there. Nest and Vander both are going to be scoundrels so that L3 dispels them and the debuffs on him. Uh, meanwhile, Holdo is just giving more crit avoid to Ray if she wants it or potentially passively taunting. Uh, this team it can be pretty good. Nest will, I've had multiple times that I've run this comp before and Nest is the only one alive because they kill Ray, they kill everyone else and then they time out on Nest because it just takes a time to kill Ray usually and then Nest just has that uh, inborn resilience and a bunch of lifeblood that Ray's generated. So that team can work. 
uh, the Bando team, I expect that we're going to be using these guys somewhere else later, but uh, right now they're pretty good with Ray and they're not that great on their own. Anyways, um, the clones, as like we talked about now on offense, if you want to do the mirror match, this is the team. It uh, totally works. I'm not going to explain how, but this is the best team on offense in my opinion. But then what do you even do with Jedi training Ray? I really have no idea. So <clears throat> guys, that was already 25 minutes for 5v5. We're going to do 3v3 for just a minute and then we're going to catch you loose. So, uh, now we're, we're definitely not going to run Ray with, uh, we're not going to run Ray with Jedi Training Ray. The two comps we're going to use, uh, really the best two comps in my opinion right now, Jedi Training Ray with the two droids, pretty good. Um, obviously they do they do some work. They kill the Commander Luke team. They do uh, they, they kill most things honestly. Like anything that requires uh, that has a lot of healing, a lot of the timeout squads, like the squads with Barris or uh, with General Kenobi, the the squads that. <clears throat> yeah, really tough to kill. She does healing immunity on her special, so <clears throat> you know she dispels the tanks or the taunts. She can do all kinds of things. Um, this is a good versatile squad. It's not going to get you great banners in three v three, but it, it does do some work. Like I said, kills that three v or kills that Commander Luke team, especially if you have a modded for potency and crit damage. Um, or crit chance, I should say. Now the Fin Fin Po team is still slowly starting to melt away. It, um, it, a lot of different comps beat it now. It used to be, the, we called it the social contract team. It was the squad that allowed you to kind of just, um, I mean, you, you put it on defense, and for a while, the only known comp that would beat this easily would be Han and Chewie with a rebel lead. And so you, everyone, uh, for a long time, for over a season, like a season and a half, maybe two, everyone placed their Fin Fin Po team on defense, and then everyone kept their their uh, rebels team, their, you know, like wedge Han Chewie team, to kill it. And it was like a social contract. We all agreed to put this team on defense and kill it with... Wedge Honchu, but now I just use Imperial Troopers or something like that. So uh, easy enough to kill this squad. Uh, if you want this squad to continue to live, make Finn really fast, really, really fast. If you, if someone can't outspeed Finn, then they're going to be up a creek. Then they'll have to use the social contract team. Otherwise, Imperial Troopers, I mean, how fast can he get? He, he doesn't get super fast. Uh, the, the thing about this squad, guys, uh, the reason it's good is because Finn lead uh, in 3v3 is just kind of overpowered. So it gives them plus 60% defense, offense, and potency. These guys do a lot of extra damage or a lot of damage anyways. They have great uh, synergy with each other. Finn is going to just max them out and uh, they can regenerate their health. It, this team is a fiasco if you don't have a good counter to it. So uh, the next iteration of this though is if you don't, if people are killing it with troopers, then put Nest in here because Nest will stop troopers from countering almost anything, uh, at least in 3v3. So uh, not as much damage, no leadership, but these two have great synergy. They're going to do a lot of damage. That's currently what the meta is kind of transitioning into. Um, and meanwhile, you have Ray here. This is the kind of the throwaway squad that I like to use. Uh, Ray, I use her as bait to kill uh, for other people to come and kill your um your own <clears throat> uh it, galactic legend uh, and then they use sith eternal and it's a good trade uh, it's just like a swap like uh, i always put a ton of offense on her in 3v3 you guys saw uh, she's just maxed out on offense right now so offense arrow uh offense triangle offense cross and uh and uh, whatever I guess it would be square no, every, every square is the is offense though um, and then yeah uh, here's the thing uh, the damage is what's going to scare away like if you want if people want to use Sith Eternal uh, to kill this squad that's great they if they don't have a really high health modded Sith Eternal uh, with Watt then uh, this is gonna kill him it this that like somewhere around 1200 her offense gets so crazy and the reason for that is when she does her ultimate 
she does extra uh, she she does damage based off of like she spreads it out amongst people so if she's uh if she's up against three different people and she's doing a hundred thousand damage we'll say we'll do easy math so hundred thousand damage she's going to if she's hitting three people she's going to do uh 33,333 damage to each of them if she's hitting five people she's only going to do twenty thousand to each of them uh, so it's dispersed uh in 3v3 therefore the offense is more uh, uh, the concentrated offense is more valuable even than trying to max out her health so um, you know that that's why in 3v3 you want her to be offense modded instead of like the tenacity or health builds that a lot of people are running um, and then vet Han, uh, whatever man just uh, put on some you know kind of fastish mods plus 80 speed something like that put some offense on him some health, call it good. Holdo, same thing, just health, and who cares about her speed? And uh, that, that's a good throwaway team. If you want something a little better, uh, if you want an actual hold, this is probably the best version, is Ray with the with Quill and IG. Uh, this, uh, these guys might be hijacked for later. I like to take Bando with them on offense, so I don't like to use them here. Uh, but that, that is an option. And then, I mean, uh, I guess the very best offense, or uh, another, uh, I'm not going to say it's a good option. You can do Ray Han Chewie. I would recommend against it now, especially because Han and Chewie are their own team. You could also do Ray with the Hero Bros. That is maybe the best version of them. Uh, but then you're wasting another team that you could form with Nest, and that, that seems kind of fun. So, um... Uh, another kind of interesting squad here, guys, and that, I mean, it's been kind of explored already, but uh, for those of you who are new to the faction, you can use Poe with the heroes, or with the veterans. You can actually use, if you want to, You can, this is kind of a nuke team. So you want a, you want a leader who's kind of weak, who, who can kind of just be pushed over. So this, this lead, what does he even do? He gives plus 30% offense, which is actually great for them, because that's all they want is a ton of offense, and then potency is good just because then uh you, they can land their debuffs but here, here's what happens guys so both of them have a thing that if you kill han or if you kill chewy first then the, the other one's going to take a bunch of like bonus turns basically um and let's see is this the ability no it must be this wow he does he, he has two uniques that is fascinating um okay so Let's see, when veteran smuggler Chewbacca or a resistance ally in the leader slot is defeated, Han gains 100% turn meter, his cooldowns are reset, and he takes an additional turn after his next turn. So he ta it, it's like he just takes two turns in a row, basically. And so what happens, it, what you want, you don't have to have Poe. Poe was nice because he gives leadership, but what people do, they'll accidentally kill Poe because he taunts, and if you make him pretty weak, then Poe will go, They'll kill him, and then both of these guys will just, like, explode. Like, they'll both do a bunch of damage. And then if you're still alive and you kill one of them, then the other one is going to do that a second time. And uh, in 3v3, it can be effective. I've stopped running it, but it can get holds, uh, especially early on if you've worked on the faction. you It, it can work. It works. So, um, anyways, that that's kind of mostly what you're going to be doing uh the modding doesn't change for finn uh and poe resistance heroes um really i mean most of the modding is pretty universal the biggest swap is obviously going to be in ray from 5v5 to 3v3 but otherwise i mean uh, that's it guys i think i think that's that about covers it i i don't want this to get too much longer um I guess one other team I should mention, guys. It's very interesting in 3v3. Uh, I, I, I've always loved this team. And I, I just remember because um, good old Maurice, uh, my buddy from Operation Metaverse, he, he ran this against Solo Base 15, who's my co-host on the podcast. And uh, what he did, he did Ray, Jedi Training Ray. Um, he did scav, so he has his scav modded really well, like for a lot of damage. And then what he ends up, what you do, and this is what I don't like, because I like to have Watt on offense. But what what you do is you take Watt, uh, and this is a 
This can work, I guess, on offense, but on defense, it's also really good. Watt will immediately put the taunting tech on Ray, and Ray will just, uh, she, she's so survivable. In 3v3, it's really tough to kill her, especially with that taunting tech. And, uh, and then Watt just keeps on healing them. She keeps healing herself. She keeps putting foresight on herself. Uh, Scavenger Ray is modded to be pretty quick, and she's just pummeling people because that's what she does. This team can be very good. Uh, if you don't have the right counter to it, you just get stuck on it really hard. So uh, that, that team does work in 3v3. If you want to do that, then I guess you find a way to use Scav, and it's all good. Uh, that being said, guys, I'm just going to call it good. Let me know how I did. If you guys want more of these faction guides uh, with the modding and all of that, I... Um, this might have been too generalized. I really don't know. So guys, let me know. Let me know what you think. How do you use resistance? What's the best way to use resistance in 3v3 and 5v5? Um, it, when you're watching it, is there a 4v4? Did they come out with that yet? <laughs> in years in advance. Uh, anyways, guys, I am for real going to call it. So guys, thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.